Beautiful. Thank you, Tracy. We're going to start standing. So just as I mentioned before, listen to your body, do what works. We start standing. I generally teach on Mondays and Wednesdays at 4 p.m. And I like to start my classes with a lymphatic flow, invigorating lymphatic flow um, inducer, movement to induce the flow of lymph. So you're going to start with you kind of come to the back of the ears like this. You have your fingers, your index finger behind the ear and the other fingers in front of the ear. And you'll vigorously rub in that area. And I'm just being careful of my earbuds. And then brush the front of your neck down towards your heart. And then just grab, take your right hand and rub the left side of your neck and take deep breaths. Now grab your neck with your right hand on the outside and then pull and turn your head to the left and just repeat that movement. So you have over a thousand lymph nodes in your body and 760 clusters of lymph nodes. And this warm up movement, let's go to the other side, a little brush. 70% of your lymph nodes are in your neck. And so now grab flesh and turn your head to the right. Hmm. Your lymphatic vessels run parallel to your blood vessels, but your blood vessels have their own pump. Your lymphatic vessels do not. So we need to encourage the flow of lymph through massage, um, and now brush the lymph towards the heart. And now right under the collarbone, use your right hand and just vigorously rub under the collarbone. And then on the other side, the flow of lymph, the lymphatic fluid moves through self-massage, vibratory movement or G-force movement like those on a trampoline or bouncing on a yoga ball. And then brush down towards the heart. Take your left arm up and then tap under your armpit. You have a cluster of lymph nodes in the armpit. Take deep breaths. Deep breathing also moves lymph. And then brush inside your bicep and your elbow pit. Take the arm a little bit higher than the heart because you want that lymphatic fluid to move towards the heart. And then ring around your left wrist. Now raise your left arm and then drag drag that fluid down towards the heart. Your lymphatic vessels are just beneath your skin and it's this touch that moves the lymph. Other side. Use the left hand, tap under the right armpit. You can even go down towards the ribs and back up again. Brush inside the bicep and the elbow pit and then grip and squeeze the right wrist. Now raise your right arm and pull. Your lymph system, your lymph vessels move lymphatic fluid or that helps to move toxins out of your body. They move towards your heart and then moves through the circulatory system to be eliminated. And now tap above and below the belly button. When you take full breaths, your diaphragm drops down on the inhale and on the exhale, it picks up lymphatic fluid and carries it back towards the heart. So your deep breathing moves lymph as well. So big breaths in and out. And then brush up towards your heart. And you'll start to notice your body temperature increasing. You're getting a little warm. Tap your lower back. Then brush up towards the heart. And then bring your hands right at the base of your neck where that little lump is at the base of your neck and just vigorously rub it. And then take your right hand and grip your trapezius and pull forward and do the same thing with the left. Just grab muscle tissue and pull it forward. You can even turn your head towards the hand that's pulling. 
Drop your chin down a little, take some deep breaths. So now you're not only moving length, but you're also giving yourself a bit of a self massage. Hmm. I feel some little adjustments in my neck. It's quite wonderful. <laughs> Tap at the groin, bundles of lymph nodes, lymph nodes at the groin, the inner thigh, and behind the knees. And if you have the flexibility, bend forward, knees bent or straight, and just give your ankles a bit of a ring, a bit of a massage at the ankles. And then brush up towards your heart. So we started with the upper body because you wanna open up the lymph channels closest to the heart first, so that when you start to move the lymph through the channels further away from the heart, the channels closest to the heart are open. And then you start to shake. So soften your knees and knock your heels up and down on the floor. So you start to feel a full body vibration. This full body vibration moves the lymph. And deep breathe at the same time. Now, if you have good, strong ankles and feet, you can go into a little hop. You don't have to hop. It's a plus system. You can go right <laughs> and left <laughs> and breathe. Let your arms dangle. Hmm. Stomp your right foot, moving length up and stomp the left. Take your arms over your head and shake. And breathe here. And we'll return to this theme of moving lymphatic fluid throughout the class. Because it's important for your immune system, for your lymphatic system to your lymphatic fluid to be moving freely. And then your arms are down, notice how you feel. That vibration you feel throughout your limbs is also a sign that your deep tissue layers, your fascia layers are more hydrated. Open and close your fists, squeeze your hands. And as you do this, take your arms out and gradually bring them up over your head. Breathe fully. And the arms come out and down. And then close your eyes for a moment. Notice how you feel. Probably a little more heat through your body. Bring your feet, stand in mountain pose or Tadasana with the feet under the hips. You can even close your eyes and use your inner eyeballs to look inside and envision that you're standing with your feet under your lungs. Feet under the lungs, the pelvis under the lungs. Bring your palms together at the heart. One long ohm, full breath in. Now stand at the back of your mat. Soften your knees a little bit and feel the weight of your hips heavy to the floor as if you had sandbags attached to your hips and your knees are soft. Take a breath in, 
Drop your chin, exhale, roll down, slide your hands down your legs towards your ankles. Breathe in here. Roll up, exhaling, draw the belly in. Once you're at the top, stretch your arms out and up, inhale. Palms touch, hold the breath in, and then lower your arms, drop your chin, exhale, roll down. Heavy hips, knees are soft. Stay here at the bottom, breathe in. Exhale, roll up, belly in. Keep the knees soft. When you get to the top, arms out, breathe in. Palms touch. Hold the breath in as you lower your arms. Drop your chin, exhale, roll down. Let your arms be heavy, heavy head. You get to the bottom, breathe in. Exhale, roll up. Get to the top, arms up, breathe in. Hold the breath and lower your arms. Chin down, exhale, roll down. Knees are soft. You get to the bottom, breathe in. Exhale, roll up. And hoping that your body starts to feel a bit more fluid. Arms up, breathe in. Hold the breath and lower your arms. Exhale, roll down. Now stay here and breathe in. Stay here to exhale. Bring your hands to the floor and come onto your hands and knees. Bring your wrist underneath your shoulders, knees under hips. Press the floor away, take a breath in. Now exhale, round your spine like a Halloween cat. And stay here for three breaths. Just press the floor away, breathe in. Stay to exhale. Lean back even a little bit. Inhale to the center. And exhale, lean your hips back. Exhale, 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 lean back further. Now inhale, center, come to a neutral spine, shoulders over wrist. Exhale, lean back without moving your hands, pull your belly in. Inhale, shift your weight forward. Exhale, lean back, reach the tail down towards the knees. Again, breathe in. Now exhale, see if you can go back even further, bringing the hips towards the heels. Inhale forward. Only go back as far as your knee flexibility will allow. Hips back, exhaling, exhaling, exhaling. Inhale center. And exhale, round the spine, tuck the tail. Leaning back. Now come back to the center and pause. Stretch your left leg straight back so you're on the ball of your left foot and push back through the ball of the foot, feeling that stretch in the calf. So you'll push into the floor with your hands and then switch legs, left knee down, right leg, press that heel back and take a breath here. Hmm. Come back to the center. This time, stretch the left leg back. So lift the left leg up and reach that leg back. Press the floor away. Squeeze your left butt cheek and breathe. Knee down. Right leg, reach it straight back. See if you can get the knee to be absolutely straight. Press back through the heel and breathe here. Press evenly through both hands as best you can.
Take another breath. And exhale, knee down. Now the right, the left leg, reach it back and the right arm forward, thumb up. So in these positions, you're waking up your core, building some heat, waking up your back, your lower back, bringing some heat into those areas and breathe. Hand and knee comes down. Right leg, lift it and reach back. Left arm stretch forward, thumb up. And begin to notice if one side is easier to hold than the other. And knee down. Sit back in child's pose. You can have your knees together or apart, whatever works for your body. Rest your elbows on the floor, bring your head down. If your head doesn't touch the floor, you can bring a block in place and rest your forehead on the block. I want your forehead to rest on something, either the floor or a yoga block and breathe. Every time you breathe, the movement of your diaphragm inside your body going up and down creates or generates a deep internal stretch. And that internal stretch from the movement of your diaphragm is equally, is as equally important as the movement on the outside. Now come onto your hands and knees for thread the needle. If you have a block, move it out of the way. What I'd like you to do is have both your hands outside the yoga mat on the floor. <clears throat> So leave your left hand where it is just outside the mat, the level of your shoulders. Reach your right arm straight out, breathe in and exhale, weave it underneath you to the left. Your torso turns to the left. The right side of your, the right arm is on the floor. Your head turns left and the right side of your head is on the floor and breathe. Press down through your left palm and feel your torso rotate to the left. Now breathe here, feel your ribs move as you inhale and exhale. Press the back of your right arm into the floor as well as the left palm. One more full breath. Now press up through the left hand, put the right arm down just outside the mat and take a breath in. And then just exhale, reach the left arm through. Turn your head to the right, press your right palm into the floor and the back of your left arm down and breathe. Try and breathe in and out through your nose, the entire class as much as possible. The exception, inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth, but do your best to not inhale through your mouth. Exhale completely and come back to the center and lower down to your elbows. Now what I want you to do is hold on to your biceps. So like this, grab your upper arms and this is the distance I want your arms to be apart. So grab your upper arms and then keep your elbows where they are and interlace your fingers to press your forearms into the floor. Tuck your toes, take a breath in. And as you exhale, press your forearms into the floor and let your upper back go round a little bit and the head dangle. So the head is not on the floor. Inhale again. Exhale, lift your hips up for dolphin. And you walk your feet in just a touch so that you can put some weight on the feet. 
press down through the forearms, the head is not on the floor. And once you're up, try not to move your elbows. Your elbows stay in that original position where you are able to grab your biceps. Take another two breaths here. So at any point during class, you can come out of the pose when you need, if we're holding a pose. What I'm offering is a suggestion for what I think would be awesome. But if you've had enough, just take a break whenever you need. Lower your knees to the floor. Pause here. Take a breath. And come up to kneeling. So you're on your knees. Anytime we're on your knees, if you need padding, just grab a, a cushion or a thin folded blanket or something like that. Step your right foot forward and start off with your foot just in front of your knee so that when you lunge, you end up with your knee right over your ankle. So stack your hands on top of your thigh, feel your shoulders pull down and you take a breath. Exhale, lunge forward. Inhale, shift your weight back. Exhale, lunge forward. And we'll do it a couple more times dynamically because if you haven't been real active today, you wanna be able to feel what your hips feel like before we go into holding the pose. Just become aware of opening up these areas that may have been stiff. Now you'll hold the pose, lunge forward, squeeze your left buttock cheek, press down through the palms and make it very active. Feel your chest lift. Your choice, keep your hands right where they are or reach them up and interlace your fingers. If you choose to interlace your fingers, lengthen up so the hips lunge forward and the torso lifts and arches back at the same time and breathe. So arms can be down with the hands on the thighs or up overhead. If your fingers in are laced overhead, reach your knuckles to the ceiling. Take another breath in. And then exhale, hands to the thighs, and then press back. We'll repeat the dolphin. Come down onto your forearms. Hold onto your biceps, interlace your, I mean, get that distance and then interlace your fingers. Pause for a moment. Breathe, press the floor away, broaden the upper back, dangle the head, tuck your toes, breathe in, exhale, hips come up. Walk the feet in a little and press the heels toward the floor. And perhaps you can stay here for four full breaths. Press the floor away, reaching your chest towards your ankles. Now lower your knees down. Pause here. You're gaining strength, steadiness, and focus. Come on up to your knees. Step your left leg forward. Start off with your foot in front of your knee. Bring your palms on top, one hand on top of the other. Now lunge forward and back. And just bringing some awareness to the right hip flexors. One more of the dynamic movement, press down through all five toes. Now lunge forward, press down through your palms, lift and open up and lengthen the whole all across your belly. Squeeze your right buttock. And for some of you, this may be exactly what you need and enough, but if you want more of a challenge, inhale the arms up, interlace the fingers, and lift and reach for the ceiling with your knuckles. Steady breath. 
Bring your hands to your thigh, push back, and we'll repeat the dolphin. Come down onto your elbows, pause first though. Look at your elbows and shoulders, make sure the elbows and the shoulder are stacked. Interlace the fingers, press the forearms down and tuck your toes. Breathe in, exhale, hips up. Walk the feet in a little and reach the heels toward the floor. So actively push the floor away. So you feel like your head is floating away from the floor, but your neck is completely relaxed and the jaw is soft. Two more full breaths. Lower your knees, open your knees and go back into child's pose. Walk the hips back. Arms can stay forward. The forehead rests on the floor or a yoga block. Rest your forehead on something, don't dangle your head. If you don't have a yoga block and your head doesn't touch the floor, just bend your elbows and stack your forearms and rest your head on your forearms. Deep, steady breath. Now come stretch your arms forward, lift your head, reach your arms out, spread your palms, shift your weight forward for plank pose. Bring your knees under your hips. So this is where we start. Reach your left foot back and press back through the ball of the foot. Press through the palms and feel your upper back engage. Just one leg for now and breathe here. And now lift your right leg and lower your left knee. Press the floor away, feel your shoulders pull down your back and breathe. Eye gaze is slightly forward. Try to avoid hanging your head down. We do enough of that. Keep the gaze forward. And now both knees come up if you like. Squeeze your buttocks, press the floor away. Remember, you can have one knee down. You can even have both knees down. Breathe. Knees down, shift the hips back, and come to kneeling. Step your right foot forward. Now reach your arms forward and up. Spread your fingers, lift and lengthen. Eye gaze is forward or up and breathe. Lower the hands to the floor to you're on your fingertips. Now you can keep your fingertips be on your fingertips or if your hands don't comfortably touch the floor, put your hands on yoga blocks. Now allow your hips to sink towards the floor and breathe here. Shoulders pull down. Now if you're using blocks, they can be as high as you like, whatever you need for support can be on the middle setting or even on the highest setting. I have long arms, so I don't even really need the blocks because I have long arms and it works for me, but do what you need. Steady breath. Now shift your hips back, let your right leg come as straight as you can get it. Let the toes come up back towards the face. Now inhale, lengthen your spine, reach your chest towards your toes. Exhale, round your spine, coming down towards your right leg. 
And again, inhale, reach your tailbone back, your chest up and exhale. Use the rhythm of your breath. Inhale up. Exhale forward. And now stay here. Now lunge forward. Walk your hands forward. Keep your left hand on the floor. Turn towards your right leg and your right arm stretches straight up. Lean back against an imaginary wall and let your chest open to breathe. Bring the hands down to the inside of that right foot. So we're on the inside of the leg. You can stay on your palms. You may come down to an elbow. You can even stack your blocks and rest your elbows on the blocks and breathe. Steady your breath. Soften your jaw. Come to your hands. Shift back onto your knees. If you have blocks, move them out of the way. We'll practice plank pose once again. Spread your fingers. And I'd like you to grip the floor as if you could pick up your yoga mat and toss it across the room. So engage your forearms and your hands. First, lift the right knee, stretch back through that right leg, press the floor away, look a little forward, breathe. Now switch, left leg straight, right knee down. Take a breath. You should already feel work through the upper body. And then if you'd like to go further, both knees lift. Lower the knees, take your time, there's no rush. Come up. Move with your breath, left foot forward. Arms reach forward and up, inhale. Exhale, lunge forward, squeeze your right buttocks stabilizing your pelvis, lengthen up through the torso, steady breath. If arms up is too much, then put your hands on your thighs like we did before. Lower your hands, right hand down. Left arm reaches up, turn your torso towards your left leg. If that's too much, put your left hand on your thigh and turn your chest. Steady breath. Put the left hand down to the inside of the left foot. You can stay on your palms, drop down to one or both elbows, use a block or not. And we'll stay here for about four or five breaths, probably about five breaths. Be sure to practice according to what works for you. You're holding a variation of the pose that you can keep your breath steady and you're not struggling. You might feel work, you may feel challenged, but there's no struggle. Now press up to your palms. 
Move the blocks out of the way if you use them. Come back into child's pose. Open your knees and set your hips back. Forehead on the floor, a block, forearms, wherever you can rest your head. And take three full breaths here. And then come forward, lay face down. First, just rest your forehead on the back of your hands. Point your toes back and feel your shoulders pull down and take a couple of breaths here, feeling your belly swell towards the floor. On the exhale, pull your abdomen in as if you could pull the flesh of your belly away from the floor. Again, breathing in, belly presses into the floor. And then as you exhale, find all of your deepest abdominal muscles and try and lift your belly button off the floor without moving the bones. Do that twice more. See if you can get the belly button to dome away from the floor. Now for open sesame, reach your left arm out to the side, shoulder level, palm down. Turn your head to the right and bring the palm of your right hand on the floor and roll to your left, onto your left hip. Let that right leg just dip back, just off your yoga mat possibly, and breathe. The whole left side of the head is on the floor, the left ear maybe. Breathe to feel the opening through the front of the chest and the shoulder, the twist in your waist. Now to go the other way, come face down and stretch your right arm out, palm flat, shoulder level, Turn your head to the left, drag your left arm in and roll onto your right hip and right side of the shoulder and chest. Full breath, let that top leg, the left leg just fall back. With every inhale, there's a movement in your ribs. And that rib cage movement is a sign of the filling up of your lungs. And the movement of your diaphragm, the downward descent of your diaphragm pushes the ribs out. Come back to center. Reach your arms back so your palms face your body and the thumbs, the thumb tips are on the floor. Exhale, press your pelvis into the earth. Inhale, lift your, for locusts, lift your head, your chest, your arms and breathe. Use the muscles in your back, lift your arms up and back. Take another breath and exhale, come down. Once again, left arm stretches out, open sesame. 
Roll onto the left side, turn the head to the right. This time you'll stay shorter. Take a breath in. Switch sides, right arm stretches out. Turn the head to the left, roll to the right side. That left leg comes up and over. One full breath in and out. Come to the center. For locust pose, this time turn your palms toward the floor. Exhale, press the pubic bone down. Inhale, lift head, chest, legs, and arms. Stay up. Use your inner thighs and draw your legs toward the center line. One more full breath in and out. Come down. One more time, stretch the left arm out, roll to the right, to the left, roll onto your left hip. <laughs> and this time you can keep your right leg straight or if you like, you can bend the right knee and put the right foot flat on the floor so the right knee points to the ceiling. Now let's switch sides. Stretch the right arm out, right palm down. Roll onto the right side. And you can keep the left leg straight or you can bend the left knee, foot flat on the floor and breathe. Choose what feels good to you, not what hurts. Pain is not a sign of progress. <laughs> Come back to the center. Now the only difference is instead of a straight leg locus, you're going to bend your knees. Thumbs, the thumbs point toward the floor. Stretch your arms back, palms face in. Exhale, press the pelvis down, squeeze your buttocks, lift your knees up off the floor. And then inhale, lift the chest. So feel the knees lift up, the chest lift up. The arms reach back. Now you can stay here, or if you have the flexibility in your quadriceps, your knees, then you can reach back and grab your ankles and then pull the legs away and open your chest, breathe. Your choice, remember, if you don't easily touch the ankles, then just reach back without holding. Take another breath here and then release. You can turn your head to the left. We're gonna repeat that. So remember the first variation we did was leg straight. You can keep practicing the locust with the leg straight. You don't need to go to the bow variation if it doesn't work. Let's look down, turn the palms to face your thighs. Now you can keep your legs straight or bend your knees. And before doing anything, press your pelvis down and lift your knees and thighs up and then inhale, lift the torso up. Flex the ankles and push the heels toward the sky. You can stay here or grab your ankles and inhale, pull your, push your ankles back and pull your chest open and breathe. And then release, turn your head to the right. Take three breaths. Release the weight of your body into the floor.
One more time, look down. Now remember, we're practicing this third time. I like to feel like the third time is the best one. <laughs> but if you're done, then you can just rest and go into child's pose. Bend the knees, exhale, pubic bone down, thighs lift up. Inhale, lift the chest and just reach back. And should you choose, hold on to your ankles and reach the legs back and peel the chest up and open. Feel the thighs float up even more. Take another breath. And then lower down. And bring your hands under your shoulders. Reach back into child's pose. Your knees can be together or apart. Your forehead rests on something, the floor, yoga block, forearms. Now come up and lay on your right side. So lay on your right side, your right arm is forward. And then what you do is you lean back slightly so your head is on the floor, but you're not laying all the way down, right? You're just laying on that right hip mostly. And then pull your left knee in, interlace your fingers around the left knee. Your head is down. And we're going through a series of movements to, that help to release the back. Your right leg presses down into the floor. So there's a bit of an isometric contraction happening here. Okay. So remember, you're not on your back. You're on your right hip and right shoulder. Pull the left knee in. And now you have a bit of an isometric contraction. Press your knee into your hands, but your interlaced fingers are keeping your leg from popping out, right? So you're pressing the knee against the hand and the hand against the leg and you breathe. As you exhale, pull the belly in. Again, breathe in and exhale, belly in. One more full breath, breathe in. And exhale, belly in. Now pull that knee all the way in as far as you're able to get it. And feel that connection between your left thigh and your left rib cage. And then release. Bring both your knees in. Stretch your right arm out. I wanna make an adjustment. I can't see your name from here because I don't have my glasses on. But see if you can adjust your body so you're not looking at me like that. Turn your head the other way. <laughs> I don't wanna get up this, oh, there you go, you got it. Because right now your name is really small and I can't see it. So pull your knees in, reach your right arm forward. And next, straighten your right leg on the floor. That was a mistake, yeah, right leg straightens out. Now your left knee is on the floor and bring your right hand down. So you're so far on your side that your knee lays on the floor. If your knee doesn't lay on the floor, then grab a yoga block and put it underneath your knee because I want your knee to be pinned down so that this twist does not go into your sacroiliac joint and in your lower back. So pin that left knee down, reach your left arm forward, breathe in. And exhale, twist, roll towards the left and reach your arm back, keep that left knee on the floor. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, roll back. Keep the left knee pinned down. Pull the belly in on the exhale. Inhale, reach forward. 
Exhale, twist and roll back. That knee stays tacked down. One more time, breathe in. And exhale, pull the belly in. And come back to the center. Now pull your knees in, press up, and you'll lay on your left hip. Of course, if I can't see you and you, you have your camera off, you can just roll over. <laughs> you don't have to face me. So you're on your left hip, left leg straight, pull the right knee in and interlace your fingers. So remember, you are not on your back. You're on your left hip. Press your left leg into the floor. Your fingers are interlaced around your knee and you've got a bit of an isometric contraction. Press your knee against the palms of your hand. And you're also trying to pull your leg in and take three full breaths. Breathe in. Exhale, belly in. It's a great way to release the back and to create more mobility through your hips. Belly pulls in. One more full breath. And now release that isometric contraction and just pull the knee in towards the chest. Bend your elbows and get the knee right up against your ribs if possible. And breathe here. Hmm. Now keep your left leg straight, reach your left arm out and just roll to your side and put that right knee on the floor. So you tack your right knee down on the floor, put your left hand on top of it. So remember, if your knee doesn't lay on the floor, put a block or a blanket underneath it. Reach your right arm forward, breathe in. Exhale, twist, roll your chest toward the ceiling and reach your right arm back. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale. Reach back, but keep that right knee glued down. Do this twice more. Reach forward, breathe in. I love this movement for creating more mobility through the mid back and the upper back. One more time. And tacking the knee down like this helps to keep your lower back from twisting too much. Because our lumbar spine is not really meant to twist a whole lot. And then roll on over to your back. Hmm. Pull your knees to your chest. So the structure of our spine is that the smallest vertebrae are at the cervical spine, the neck. And these little vertebrae make it easy for us to twist our head and our neck in different directions. And as the vertebrae get fatter and fatter and fatter, there's less and less mobility or rotation mobility. So the lumbar spine, the vertebrae and the lower back are really fat and they're not meant for us to twist a lot in the lower back. So keeping your pelvis stable while you rotate through the upper and mid back is more optimal to keep you from straining in your back and getting injured from trying to push in your yoga practice. Now, you're holding on to the outside of your knees, interlace your fingers around your legs, and then press your knees into your hands and you'll feel your lower back press into the floor. Take a breath in, and then exhale, hug your knees in. Again, inhale, press the knees into the hands, feel your lower back press into the floor, and then exhale, let the thighs come close to your belly. One more time, inhale, press into your hands, and then exhale, knees press into the belly. Now put your hands on top of your knees and make circles. 
Switch directions with your circle. Now bring your feet flat on the floor, all 10 toes point forward. Press your arms down, take a breath in. And as you exhale, tuck your tail and lift your hips up. Bend your elbows and press your, four, your upper arms, your triceps and your elbows into the floor and the hips up. Press down through your feet and breathe. Keep lifting up, you feel your upper back, the back of your shoulders press into the floor. And then lower the hips, lower the arms. Take a breath in. Bring your feet together, inner thighs together. Pull the left knee into the chest, press your palms down. Breathe in, exhale, bridge the hips up, bend your elbows, and then press your triceps and your elbows and that right foot into the floor. Breathe. Come down. Feet and knees together. Take a breath. Pull the right knee into the chest. Bend your elbows, we'll start there. Breathe in, exhale, bridge your hips up, press that left foot down, press your elbows, your triceps, reach your knee to the ceiling, breathe in. Squeeze your left butt, use your hips. And knees down or hips down. <sighs> Happy baby, bring your legs up, grab a hold of your ankles or hands across the bottoms of your feet and draw your knees toward the floor. Slow down your breath. And as you exhale, Soften through the hips and let the knees glide down past the sides of your body. Bend your knees, bring your feet flat to the floor. We get to re repeat that bridge sequence. It's so important to strengthen the back line of the body. So we're going to do it. Set all 10 toes point forward, feet are hip width apart. Turn your palms down to start, get the back of the shoulders down, breathe in. Exhale, tuck your tail, press down through your feet and lift your hips. Now bend your elbows and can you lift a little higher? Steady breath. Try not to let your knees splay out. Keep them pointing directly forward. Chest towards your chin. And then the hips come down. And you lower your arms. Move your feet and knees together. Take a breath. We'll start with the right knee to the chest. So we'll work the left leg first this time. So pull the right knee in, breathe in, exhale, lift your hips, bend your elbows, lift a little higher. And then come down, pause. Left knee in, breathe in, exhale, hips up, 
Bend your elbows, press a little higher. Lower down. And happy baby, both legs up. Grab a hold of your ankles or hands on the bottoms of the feet. And so your ankle is above your knee and you draw your knees down towards the sides of your ribs. Soles of your feet face the ceiling. Now bend your knees and draw your knees together. And once again, make circles, but this time make the circles quite big. However big you can straighten your elbows, the length of your arms. And the knees, both of the knees go in the same direction. And switch directions. Now hug your left knee, straighten your right leg. Take a breath in and exhale. Now keep holding that knee with your left hand, right hand behind your head. Breathe in. Now exhale, curl up and touch your right elbow to your left knee. So let the elbow and the knee touch each other. Now stay there. Put your left arm on the floor, but keep your right elbow and knee touching. Left hand is on the floor and breathe. And then come down, stretch your left leg along the floor. Hug your right knee to your chest. Left hand behind the head, breathe in. Exhale, curl up, touch your left elbow to your right knee. Now take your right hand and put it on the floor. Keep the knee and elbow touching, breathe. Come down, extend your legs, separate your feet, turn your palms up and just roll your head from right to left. Close your eyes. and come back to the center. So it's pretty much a sample of what my Monday and Wednesday 4 p.m. classes are like. Sometimes they're a little harder, but that's about it. Some strength, breath work. There are times when we're focused a little bit more on breath. Close your eyes. and allow the weight of your body to drop into the floor. Feel your heels heavy into the floor. Keeping your eyes closed, use your inner eyeballs to look inside and also feel, feel the weight of your hips heavy into the floor. Your thighs. Feel the weight of your upper back and shoulders. The weight of your head. Soften your jaw. Let the tongue fall to the back of the head. Now 
And with your eyes closed, just move your eyes from right to left. Don't open your eyes, just move your eyeballs right and left, right and left. And then make circles with your eyes, with your eyes closed. Circling about four times to the right and four times to the left. Now relax your eyeballs and rest. Rest your mind on the sound of yoga.
Start to take deeper breaths and move your fingers and your toes. Turn your head from right to left. Stretch your arms over your head and take a deep breath in. Bend your knees and roll to your side. Rest your head on your arm. And then take your time as you sit up. Just pause there. and gradually begin to sit up. Om Hari Om. We'll do three rounds together. You'll inhale and repeat Om Hari Om within your mind. And then you'll say it out loud, slow and long. Om Hari Om. We'll do three rounds. You'll, you'll catch the rhythm after the first round. Take a breath in. Om Hari. Take the time to notice how you feel. Not only how your body feels, but the state of your, your mental state. Possibly a bit more relaxed and simply more mellow.
Namaste. Thank you.